Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I hope you're all having a really fun holiday season and I hope you're feeling ready for Christmas. Last uh, recap before Christmas. Yeah. Are we gonna post one on Christmas? I was thinking about that this morning. I mean, since Christmas Eve is on a Saturday and Christmas er, and Christmas is on a Sunday, like we yeah. don't normally, we usually have everything ready to roll by the week, by like Friday night. Yeah. So like it'd be business as usual for us to post one, but will, will you guys care <laughs> on Christmas day? I mean, you're going to be with your families. We'll probably still post one. I'm guessing. Yeah. Cause we're It'll just, feel we're a little so bit though, like, uh, like Scrooge and what's his assistant's name? Mick and Ken edit the, the day before Christmas. So like Kravitz or, uh, what is it? I don't remember what it, I just watched a video with the kids. Uh, I can't remember. Whatever. Is. Well, no, Ken edits that on a Friday. So it'd be the yeah, day so before, it'll be the day before Christmas Eve. I don't so see why we fine. wouldn't have one, but yeah. who knows? I mean, who knows what next week will bring? I feel like I've got almost all of our shopping done. Pretty much. Yeah. A couple little things to pick up here and there. But anyway, I hope you guys are all having a really good holiday season. All of that said, today's recap video is sponsored by Little Prince Plants, which I will talk about here in a little bit. Also, side note. I am a bit under the weather, so if I'm not my normal peppy self, chipper, chipper self, chipper self, then uh, you'll know why. But I got my menthol, yeah, lozenges. Oh, I was I grew up. My parents said lozenges, and it wasn't until we were married that I realized that on that, our honeymoon that first wasn't day the word. Being married, I, I said the word, and you were like, "What? What? <laughs> it's lozenge." Do you remember um, we called my parents? Yeah. Because I was like, that's the word, lozenger. Nope. I think I was kind of hoping that it was it was still correct, like just in a small... You know how some people call couches like Davenport's or... Uh, Davino. Davino. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a regional thing. But I don't even think that's true. I think <laughs> lozenger is just 100% wrong. Uh, so you started out... Our marriage just being wrong. Okay, I've got the questions all queued up here. First video was setting up a bird bath and decorating our kitchen entrance. So, bird bath. Erin and I moved one up to where we have got the bird feeders. We put in a little heater thing into the, what is it, bird bath? De icer? De yeah, de icer. Whatever. It keeps the water from freezing. Um, and then I decorated the kitchen entrance. Just put a garland, simple garland that I didn't even make around the door, a wreath I had made uh, on the door. And then we just filled up the kitchen window box. And that was a fun one. I used Bunny Tail's grass from two seasons ago, um, dried oranges, some gold leaf gourds, seeded eucalyptus, noble fir, uh, rose hips. There's quite a number of things in that window box, but it turned out really festive. Um, Hillary said, are all those rose hips yours or did you have them in your greens order? I had those particular ones in my greens order. I didn't even order them. Like they, I paid they for them, up. but there was, um, so I ordered winterberry holly that we use in the portico area. And then at the bottom of the box, there was two bundles of rose hips. Huh. Surprise. Well, I was happy to have them cause they are gorgeous, but I used one bundle up when I was making the wreath for around the door. And then uh, I gave some of the rose hips away for other people making wreaths. And then uh, that, that was just one bundle's worth that was in that whole window box. It stretched quite far. I was happy with that. Uh, June said, whatever happened to the humongous sweet autumn clematis that was on the rusty gate in the triangle garden? Did you move it somewhere? No. We did not. Super established, super easy vine to get a hold of for like $10. So we decided, it's not worth the move for that one. There were some things we just had to let go. You know, we let friends and family come in and dig anything they wanted. Um, we had cer certain things earmarked that we wanted to make sure to dig up and, and move. But there are certain plants, you know, that you can get a hold of easy for cheap that just aren't worth the effort and the transplant shock. Well, is it even cheaper for you too because yeah. of your discount? Yeah, so $10 discount. minus my discount, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Judy said, I too love seeing the kitties when they show up, but I have a question since you are setting up water and feed for the birds. Are you not concerned Russell and Cheddar may start attacking the birds as most cats will do? I have feeders out for, it looks like the rest of the comic got cut, but um, I'm not super concerned about it. They no. don't hunt. They don't hunt. We, they're well-fed kitties. I never see them. You know, we had that. It wasn't an issue. It was actually really good. But um, Dexter, our first cat, was much more of a hunter yes. and would catch mice and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like the cats we have now, I don't even think they would go after mice, which is like the reason a lot of people get cats yeah. is because you're trying to keep a rodent population down, mm -hmm. or uh, especially on farms yeah. or things like that. 
Which is, yeah, it's kind of necessary when you've got lots of feed and stuff stored. Mm -hmm. You don't want them overrun with mice, which can happen so quickly. But our cats... (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't going to say it. (laughs) Uh, Nayella said, uh, have you... Have you ever thought of adding an outdoor kitchen to eliminate the grill right outside the door? Uh, I haven't really thought about it. I mean, I see lots of pictures where outdoor kitchens are just so beautiful, but I just look at it as another spot to clean. (laughs) Honestly, I mean, our stuff gets so gross during the growing season, like in one day, Mm -hmm. because we have so much agricultural stuff going on in fields and just dust everywhere. And it's windy through our summer. Here, I mean, we usually get like a weekly windstorm, like a big one with big gusty winds that knock down trees and things like that. Um, So I just have a feeling, be kind of like the gazebo. Remember the gazebo? We hardly ever used it. Mm -hmm. It was always dirty. Like I felt like if I need to sit down here, I need to go clean it first because I'm going to get super dirty just sitting here. One of those kind of situations. It would be really fun though. Yeah. You know, could stay clean, self-cleaning outdoor kitchen. I think uh, Tool Time had that, didn't they? Oh, the probably. Bin, the Binford, the, Binford. <laughs> the clean, self-cleaning kitchen, yeah. 5,000. Yeah. Um, Joy said, can you please show how you made those gourds? Won't they get moldy? No, they won't actually. They're dried out. I gathered those from my parents' orchard like four or five years ago, maybe even longer than that ago, and they were already dried out there. Like they had grown, they had been sitting there through a winter, and they were still sitting there through a summer. And it was back when there were, were actual orchard trees in there and like tall kind of orchardy looking grass. Um, and so the gourds were just kind of hidden a little bit. So no, nothing messed with them. Uh, I actually have one of them that's kind of cracked and I saw some seeds in there and I thought, oh, I should just try. I mean, I've had them sitting out. You don't think they're dried out by now? They've been stored in a tote. I guess seeds are supposed to stay dry, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, maybe they got wet at some point though before I gathered them and sure. then they dried out. I don't know. So I thought it'd be fun to try maybe this next year because they're so cute and the perfect size to work into all kinds of things. Michelle said, time 210, your porch light is fading on and off. Is it set like that or is it possessed? It's something with like the... It's the frame rate of the camera. It's so like LED lights, from what I understand, I am not a scientist, but LED lights are flashing, I guess all the time and that's one of the things about led lights is that they save energy because they're constantly flashing and flickering and they're supposed to flicker to where they're it's not noticeable to the human eye although uh, you can kind of see it sometimes when you're especially christmas lights some like older led lights you drive past them they kind of feel like they're flickering Mm -hmm. but anyway i think when the frame rate of the camera it's like those videos you see of like a helicopter where the frame rate of the camera sees the the yeah. rotors mm-hmm. you know spinning it just, and it looks like it's not spinning at all mm-hmm. but it, it is flying in the air it's that kind of a thing mm-hmm. if i could remember to turn things off and all of that business before videos i probably would just so that it's not distracting it's like that with christmas lights too a lot like mm-hmm. the the ones inside yeah so, you know on christmas trees like when i'm down at the garden center helping and i'll be working on something there's a christmas tree behind me and you can see it just kind of like strobing right it's weird all right so today's video sponsor is little prince plants who is an online plant resource uh, i have the most experience with their house plants they have a ton of really fun like a lot of normal varieties but a lot of rare and unusual ones as well they also have perennials ground covers ornamental grasses ferns succulents probably forgetting some at the moment we will link their website down below if you want to kind of cruise through their plant selection it's really fun to look through uh one of the things that I love so much about Little Prince is the way they package their plants. We've had a lot of companies send us plants throughout the last several years. They package theirs the best of any company we've had experience with. Each plant comes wrapped in a cardboard sleeve. You cut the sleeve off and then you, when you get the plant out, they've got like this, is it sisal? It's some kind of like a packing material thing around the base of the plant holding all the soil in and that's rubber banded onto the plant can. And there's like no soil anywhere in the box, on the bottom of the box. It's very tidy. Yeah, everything is so tidy and they heat pack so they can ship even when it's like snowy and super, super duper cold, which is kind of fun to be able to bring stuff in 
this time of year. They do ship nationwide. They do a free shipping on $75 or more, and they have gift cards, which are all digital. So I know we're getting close to Christmas, but you can select the date that you want the gift card to be delivered to the recipient's email inbox. And I personally made use of that feature on their website. So we will link all of that down below if you're interested in checking out their website. Thank you, Little Prince, for sponsoring today's video. Next video was seed haul and organizing my seed stash. Oh my goodness, that project was a beast. It feels so good to have that done. And even since that video, one evening I, um, I worked on my spreadsheet until like my eyes were starting to <laughs> blink closed. But I went through my spreadsheet and I'm really trying to add a lot of detail and really categorize everything based on when it needs to be started from seed and special notes and things like that. So it's, gonna, it's a work in process, work in progress. <laughs> In front, whatever um it's needs some work still but i got a ton done that day and it's always fun to go through new seeds as well so glenda said laura can snapdragons be grown in milk jugs for winter sowing that is an excellent one to winter so every time i do snapdragons in the water jugs they do beautifully Anne said, doesn't the germination rate for seeds decrease as time goes by? Is there a rule of thumb to toss seeds after a certain amount of time? Honestly, seeds last for quite a number of years, like quite a long time. There are some that um, don't hold quite as well. I know when I was working down at the garden center, the, the um, tomatoes, peppers, onions, those three didn't hold their germination quite as well as everything else. But so long as you're storing everything in a dry place, I mean, they'll store for quite a long time. You can test them though. I actually have a package of shallots that was... Uh, it was, I think it was packaged in 2009 or 2000 and somewhere around in there. And I thought it would be fun to include it maybe in a video for you guys to see. I thought about doing a germination test and grabbing 10 seeds out of that packet and germinating them and see how many germinate. Ruth said, you have done videos of harvesting your own seeds from your vegetable and flowers. Where do they go? Separate bin slash gifting. I do have a separate bin and you know, <laughs> So I did a video of harvesting a bunch of seeds from flowers one year and I put them in these cute little glass jars and thought I will label them as soon as I'm done with this video. Now I'm like, what are you? What's mm. what kind of, and I've got jars full and I know they're from seeds, like plants I want to keep. Uh, there's some that I know like uh, pink cushion flower seeds or they look like little badminton uh, birdies. Um, so those are easy to dis distinguish, but some of them are, they all look kind of the same. Some of them. Have you noticed as you've gotten older that uh, remembering things just doesn't happen? Like no, I think that's always been me. Really? On that kind of thing. Thinking I'll go back and, and do something later. Yeah. If it's a detail thing, I probably won't remember it. Because I'm, I'm so moving on to the next thing. I seem to remember in the past, like somebody would call and say, let's do this thing at a certain time. And I'd say, okay. And I would just remember what that time was. And now if I don't write that down... I think that our lives have gotten exponentially busier. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, with the kids and, you know, you're, I mean, Aaron runs the business. I'm just like, keep my nose down and keep working and keep, you know, making videos. Um, there's just a lot going on. There's a yeah. lot of irons in the fire and some things just have to go. Details <laughs> have to go. Molly said, would it be helpful to organize the bins by when you plant them? Blue bin for everything you plant six to eight weeks early and store those together so you can just grab the bin based on the time frame. I've thought about it, honestly. Like, how easy would that be just to grab your whole bin, take it into the greenhouse, and then you just start front, front to back? And these are all the ones that if I want to start this, these types of seeds, then this is when I start them. It's something I might look at doing in the future. We'll see. As long as my spreadsheet's good, though, I could just organize my spreadsheet based on that, and then everything's alphabetical in those bins, so it'd be really easy to find them still. But... Like I said in that video, it's ever evolving. You know, we change it based on how we think it might work better. And sometimes we go back to the way we used to do it and all, all that. Would it work to use one of the Milwaukee like drawer things? For seed saving? Yeah. Does it have like little... Dividers? You know, yeah, that would work. I kind of like that they're clear. Oh, sure. I, I don't know. I And I'm like thinking about that right now. I don't think why. Why would, would that be necessary well, if they're thinking, labeled? You've got six of those things which yeah. you have to tote around. Whereas if you had, one. you know, one yeah. thing with multiple drawers or whatever. Mm. I like how streamlined mine are too. I mm. can just grab one that I need. Sure. I don't know. That's something to think about. Jennifer said, how far away should you plant an aphid host plant from other plants? In the same vicinity, you want it fairly, like decently close, um, so that the aphids will actually go to the host plant instead of like your other foot? plants. Um, I want to say, like in my raised bed garden, I had broccoli 
in one of the three by sixes, and then there was one bed in between that one and where all my calendula was. Aphids were thick on the calendula, but broccoli was clean. Mm. That's probably like 10 feet away, mm-hmm. 15 feet away or so. In the general area, I think. Going Green Mom said, how do you determine how many seeds are left in packets if you only plant part of it? Um, you know, sometimes I'll actually go to the trouble of counting them, like on pumpkins and squash, because the seeds are big, and it depends on how many there are. Um, for the smaller seeds, if I've opened the packet, I'll just write part packet, um, knowing that there's only part of a packet, but they're little seeds, so it probably means I have enough, usually, for the next season. Um, yeah. It kind of just depends. Next video was foraging in our garden to make a wreath. We went around, I got some North Pole Arvita, Leyland Cypress, rose hips, oh, and uh, fir boughs, which wasn't technically grown in our garden, clearly. It was the bottom of the Hartley tree that we cut off. Boy, I got some good mileage out of the bottom You're of that tree. You're making use of something that a lot of people have this time of year, though. I suppose, if you do a fresh cut tree. Boy, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Like, if you want greens and you want them cheap-ish, I mean, compared to a a florist order go buy yourself a christmas tree and just cut it up into pieces and you can do so much with just like yeah. one tree oh I well was... i remember as a kid like we always had a, a fresh tree so did we and mm-hmm. we all, you always have to cut off the bottom right branches to mm-hmm. make it fit inside the mm-hmm. it's fun holder. to have ways to use those yeah i'm still um i've still got a little bit left on that where i can put them in the rest of the window boxes along the house first comment the wreath is so pretty as usual you did a great job thank you Question, when you store items from the garden, let's say the bunny tails, how do you do this? Any threats of bugs? Here in North Carolina, they advise cooking our pine cones on 200 degrees, 200 degrees to kill any bugs. Is this correct? I think that is probably correct information. And I think that's probably advised everywhere, just to be sure. I have never baked a pine cone in my life, ever, and I probably never will. Uh, bunny tails, I plucked them right out of the garden and popped them in a box and put them here in the studio. I mean, you kind of know if your plant has if your plants have bugs, don't bring them into an indoor space to dry them. I mean, just take a good look at them on the outside and only bring in clean stuff. That's what I do. Sherry said, "Have you ever made hawthorn jelly? One of my mom's friends makes it. It's pretty tasty." I didn't know you could. Eat I it. didn't either. I've never even heard of that. Huh. I mean, I've heard of rosehip jelly and rosehip tea and all of that stuff, but that's interesting. I'll have to Google that. Debbie said, I want the Morden Blush Rosebush. Where can I find one? Very limited online. You know, I got mine at my parents' garden center maybe the first season we lived here. Is that a David Austin? No, it's like an anti- like an heirloom oh. sort of rose. My parents have some in their garden. Um, when it's available for them to order in wholesale, they will, and they'll have it at the garden center. Boy, I would just check with your local garden center, see if they can't put it on their list to keep their eyes out for it. Lennox Woodworking says, love the wreath in your channel. Did I miss decorating the mantle? No, you haven't, because I haven't decorated the mantle, and I don't think I want to do it. It is decorated, though. Is it? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it is. And (laughs) it's decorated with hundreds of risk pieces. Yeah. That risk the game. Um, We have two versions, the regular and... um, Lord of the Rings version. Yeah, so they have all the little dudes, the little guys. Benjamin loves to play with those pieces. Like he's so good at imaginative play Mm -hmm. and he'll like narrate, like audibly narrate his playtime. And I'll be, I'll be like, what buddy? Nothing, mom. I wasn't talking to you. (laughs) Um, But he lines up on the rocks. Yeah. Uh, All the different like colors. He categorizes them and then there's good guys and bad guys. And anyway, that's, that is true. I do have like those mirrors that have been there for years. And then there's just potted philodendrons up on the mantle. I wasn't feeling it this year. And now we're getting so close to Christmas that it's worth it. Probably not worth it at this point. Aunt Becky said, I wonder if a Vanderwolf pine would make a good wreath. It would be beautiful. Sticky? Well, any of the greens that you're Mm. using. Like, when I do remember when we went to the garden center after hours, we had like a wreath making party and that's where the wreath for the kitchen door came from. Um, I didn't wear gloves and my hands are like black, mm. you know, and you use hand sanitizer or mayonnaise to get it off. It comes right off. Um, but I think anything you use, but that would be so pretty. If our Vanderwolf pines get big enough one day, you better believe. We need to plant so many more evergreens. I know. Aaron came up with the best idea for our entrance to add a gate, you guys. It's going to be, it's, I think it's like, I don't know. I think it'll make our entrance be like, boom. More grand. Yeah. Or just more of a statement or like more purposeful. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll share that with you guys later. We're going to have to move a couple things to make it work though. One thing. Yeah. I don't even know if it's going to be necessary. 
I think it's going to be in the way. You think so? I think so. Mm. We'll explain it later. <laughs> okay. So Toko said, I would love to know how to cut the evergreens so that I don't take off wrong branches. I'm always fearful of misshaping the evergreen while I cut them from winter containers. Any tips? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, just if you have a back side, like with the North Pole Arborvitas, I try to reach to the back because we don't see that side. And then I try not to cut... Uh, too much from one spot I kind of do it here and there and then I try not to cut any leaders so I mean I can't even reach the leaders now of those North Pole arbs so there's really no harm in that when your evergreens are too small if you cut a leader it can kind of make the growth habit be a little bit weird on your tree after that point um, we should do a an evergreen pruning video at some point like cutting off growth tips to kind of control the shape of your evergreen mm -hmm. Uh, but I think if, as long as you're just cutting sporadically around the plant, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Next video was potting up pomegranates and organizing the plants in the studio. Uh, that, that video actually spanned two days. I started potting the pomegranates. I got through kind of explaining everything. I was set up to do it. And then you called me. Oh, Remember yeah, Samantha, Samantha had just like kind of lost it. Yeah. Um, and so we were I were worried. It was like, do we need to take her into yeah. the emergency room? She never or? inconsolably loses it to where she act like was almost like screaming out in pain. Right. It was, but she wouldn't, she wouldn't identify any location that she was hurt. Mm -hmm. And then w she finally just got over it watching like Nemo, right? We had, we tried all the distraction tactics. The first one is, do you want to take a bath? Mm -hmm. She said, yeah. And so I got her to the bathtub and she just, she didn't really want that. So I just held, held her there and rocked her. And, um, and then we, yeah, we tried a couple other things. It ended up downstairs watching Nemo and she like, whatever it was i wonder yeah. if it was right after she like she woke up from a nap like could she have had a nightmare and woke up just it seems like it was more emotional because nothing you know physically ever really manifested yeah unless it was like a tummy ache that went away but she wasn't even she's pretty good if we ask her is it your tum yeah is it ouchy she'll say what mm -hmm. it is or like she got hurt in the mouth earlier and she was asking me to check mm -hmm. check you know so she'll she knows Yeah, it was weird Anyway, so I packed it in for that day. I didn't come back out here. I just hung out with her the rest of the day. Um, so I came back out the next day. And then we potted up the pomegranates. It probably looked like it was all one consecutive day because I don't think I really explained what happened. It's really like a lot of that stuff's unnecessary in the middle of a video. But anyway, we ended up back in here. I organized and groomed and watered all the stuff that's right behind me. And it needed it so, so bad. So bad. It looks so much better now. Rebecca said, why does the fig and pomegranate stay in the greenhouse instead of the Hartley? I thought the Hartley would provide the warmth they need with less risk of the freezing situation. I'm not so sure about that. Um, Hartley is harder to maintain heat in big time. And I'm kind of, I'm keeping a really close eye on it, but I just, I don't want to have to run floor heaters all over and to have the mini split running like constantly to keep the temperature up in like right now when I was in there earlier, it was 18 degrees outside and it was having a hard time. Like I was chilly in there and I was just looking at all the plants thinking if my fingers and toes are feeling frozen, then you're probably borderline not going to thrive in here. Mm -hmm. um, so it might be a situation where we have to move more tropical, really like heat loving things in here for the winter and just keep hardier stuff out there, herbs and geraniums and some of those things that can take some of the cold so it's a learning curve uh, but there will be a video maybe right after this one that you'll i uh, kind of explain all of it and i showed you all the uh, all the plants in there and all of that miss the bow said i know you love to drink your coffee in a thin walled porcelain mug but doesn't it always just go cold on you it does yeah wouldn't you like a nice thermal mug to keep you your coffee warm while you work in the greenhouse i actually don't like the taste of coffee when it comes out of those mugs I have one that I'll use occasionally. One of you guys sent out. It's a little white one that's got like a dimpled sides. It's really cute. Um, I don't even know what brand it is. I think it has a Yeti, a Yeti topper on it, but I don't think it's a Yeti mug. Oh, really? I think it's just like like Tupperware in your cupboard. Everything's kind of like mismatched. Um, I'll use that one on occasion, but I just don't enjoy drinking out of those. Hmm. Like the enjoyment factor goes way down. So I just deal with the cold, the cold coffee. Janice said, do you provide air circulation for plants in the greenhouse, like from a fan? Yeah, there is a floor fan in there that will run on occasion. We haven't had any issues with humidity in there yet. So there's not a whole lot going on in there though right now. There's some plants, but it's not like super full. It's usually when it's super full and you're watering a lot that you're dealing with a lot more moisture issues. Barbara said, why do you have wire in the grass growing in the greenhouse so the dang cats stay out of it until it's established enough for them not to dig in? I noticed some digging in there and I did some light investigation it doesn't look like they actually did anything mm. that i can tell 
I didn't find anything. We'll just put it that way. And then it looks like Paul went through and he did like, he put big flat pieces over the hole. Like he mm. properly cut. Sure. I never take the time to do that. And he probably was like, when he walks by stuff that I do and he fixed it all. So it's all protected. It's coming up beautiful and it's starting to get thicker though. So I don't think we're far out from getting to use it. Uh, what is the white Sony device in the studio? The one on the supply shelf. Oh, that's the projector. So I used that projector. It actually belongs to the church that we go to. Um, and then my mother-in-law's like, just, you should keep it. <laughs> you should keep it because, you know, I used it to um, project the A Weary World Rejoices on the foam board so that I could trace it and cut it out. And she just said, you'll probably use it before we will ever use it again. So I just told her I'd store it here for them. And it's probably true. I'll probably use it before they will. So we'll be back at it decorating there. I do have an idea for next year, and then I have a de an idea for the year after that. Nice. Lots of years worth of decorating. Terry said, I've often heard you say that sedum along with several other plants don't like fertilizer. What will fertilizer actually do to them? They can make them flop. Uh, a lot of times in the landscape, if you give a plant too rich a soil like Russian sage, um, sedum, yarrow sometimes, they will just get like kind of spindly. It's like there's too much going on and they'll just flop over. Um, that's what happens. Kathy said, how long do you keep your lights on for your plants? I need to put mine under grow lights and I have no idea what I'm doing. I would start with 14 hours. You can go anywhere from 14 to 16 hours. We have our setup on a timer. I think ours should go off for 15. I'd have to look. But, but not during the night. No, right. It's during the day. They need to have that dark period to keep them. So don't like put them in, in a window. And then have grow and lights then have during the night. For 14 yeah. hours. They need to sleep too. Next and last video for this week was making huge fruit topiaries. I, I had actually been putting that project off. It was kind of our last holiday decorating project because I was so not confident in how that was going to turn out. I kind of turned I mean, out great. I loved how it turned out. But when you're dealing with fake stuff, fake plants, fake fruits, for me anyway, my confidence level goes down. And usually when I'm uh, going into a decorating project or something, I usually have pretty uh, high confidence that no matter what happens, we can make it work and we mm -hmm. can make it look okay. But in this case, I was like, this might be a total waste of a day. We'll see. Uh, but it ended up going very well. And I was kind of wishing that I used fake greens at, in the end mm -hmm. because then I could save them from year to year. They look like a big Victorian sort of Christmas decoration. And we did a the steaks in a pot that has soil in it zip tied them together, chicken wire around the outside of it, stuffed it full of moss. So you had like a moss filled topiary form, homemade, and moss you can reuse. And then I just tucked like wove greens in, real greens around the chicken wire and then hot glued pine cones and fake pears, which I got at Joanne for extremely cheap because they were in, they were already discounted and then they were back in the discounted area. So discount on top of discount. I can't remember the exact cost, but they were cheap. And if anybody local wants to do that project, good luck, because I cleaned them out. <laughs> I cleaned our local Joann's out. Uh, Kathy said, I live in zone 9B where it rarely freezes. Would you do anything differently? I wonder about keeping the moss dry. Um, the moss is wet really just to help freeze everything together. Uh, I'm not gonna wet it down again. So I think you'd be fine just doing it exactly the same way. Andrea said, not specifically related to this video, but what celebrity alive would you get a kick out of meeting? Not necessarily a garden celeb. Oh, someone who's alive today. Yeah. I've never thought about that. Not one time. You're not really like a, you don't follow anybody or it probably would be like a musician or something though. I feel like if you were going to meet somebody, yeah. yo, -yo ma. <laughs> yeah, play for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll go with that. I don't know. That's a really interesting question. What would you answer to that? Oh, a person alive? Yeah. Hmm. Um, well, I don't know if I can say it without getting political and people getting uh, like upset at me. Whisper it to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's some people too that are um, like intimidating. Like I don't feel like I'd properly be able to carry a conversation with them. Like I, I there's people you, you would admire that... Um, but they're just like at a different level intellectually. Mm, I think you do. All right. Aaron's uh, really good at, you're really good socially, like convers 
conversating with people. I don't know that I'm good at it. I think what it is is that it just, it doesn't really intimidate me. So, um, it intimidates me. Mm -hmm. And small talk and stuff like that. Sure. Mm, I don't know about small talk. Maybe I'm better at small talk and I'm worse at like deeper relationships. Yeah. If you are my friend, you know this. Like I I have several friends who are so gracious and like they'll text me and it's like three weeks later, I text them back. I'm like, I'm sorry, you know, I just, I'm not good at relationships, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I know that that's not what the question was. Dang, I really rabbit trailed on that one. There's, so there's nobody that you would say. You know, I would, um, I think it would be really interesting if you could just meet someone for like, actually have a, a long conversation and a real conversation mm-hmm. where it's just like to pick literally any president, any alive president. I would love to just ask them questions really? about what it's like being president and, I, cause I think that there's like a certain like humanity, like that you don't necessarily see with, sure. with all the presidents that, um, like they're real people, mm-hmm. you know, they have families, they have families, they have things that they care yeah. about that they don't talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, they have interests mm-hmm. aside from running the country. So I think that would be, that'd be an interesting conflict and it could be any of them, honestly. And I think it would be fascinating. Yeah. That's a good answer. Boy, I wish I had as good of an answer as that. Amy said, do you think it would work to reuse packing materials from all my delivered packages to fill the inside? Absolutely. That's a really good idea. Really good idea. Susan said, have you ever spray painted or dipped the alder cones in watered down white paint? They make pretty corsages too. I haven't done the uh, white paint, but I've done the spray snow flocking stuff. That's pretty too. Janelle said, I love seeing you back on your porch. I miss the olden days of recaps out there. Will you take the porch and sunroom off when you remodel? Okay, so I actually occasionally suggest that we do a recap out there. At this point, it it would mean moving tons of equipment up there. But usually it's either so hot or so cold. And we used to just have to suffer through because that was the only spot that we had um, to do it. And we were thankful for it. Thankful that we had a spot that was, you know, set up decently for that. But we would just be like, I'd have a floor heater going on my feet. But it was so loud that every time I was getting ready to talk, I'd have to turn it off Mm -hmm. and like get through what I was doing. And I could turn it back on if I was making a wreath and, you know, I could start doing the sped up part of it. Then I'd turn the heater back on. Um, we have talked about several different things to do with that area, including a solarium. Yeah. Um, if we make a different entrance to our house, we, we might, we might do an attached, Mm -hmm. like an attached Hartley. Right. That'd be super cool. That would be really cool. Two Hartleys. No, I mean, it wouldn't (laughs) be, it would like, I kind of want it to look similar Yeah. so that you'd have some similar similarities there going on. That's way out, you guys, like way out. Right now, we really just need to get the house painted. We need to get it like scraped, those old porches, and a lot of that needs to be scraped and redone. It was on the list last year, and then we didn't, or the year last year. And then it's we got the list for the last couple of years. It's just so difficult when you keep talking about things you can do and need to do. You know, like, yeah. So then you don't want to spend money on painting when it's like, well, you know, what if we end up extending this out and right. you, you just don't want to waste money. Right. Kathleen said, where do you get the iron urns that you potted the fruit topiaries in? I got those on a shopping day. My mom and I went on, uh, I think Monica was maybe with us on that one as well. Hmm. We've got them at LA junk in Boise, which is one of, uh, we go to that one, not as often as the other couple of stops we normally do because it's a little bit more out of the way of our normal path, but occasionally we stop there and they've got really fun stuff. And last question, Nana said, what a wonderfully fun project. Looks awesome. Why would you use fresh potting soil for this project? Wouldn't it be more cost efficient if you use the old soil? You know, there was old soil in there. I just topped it up with fresh because when we pulled the plants out from last summer, a lot of the soil was still connected. You know how that goes. You're always left a little, a little bit at the bottom. So we topped up with fresh. When we take those out, we'll just use that fresh soil, the whole setup for spring plants. And that's it. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching this recap video. I hope you're having a great day and a great week. Christmas week. So much fun. I hope you do lots of festive things and spend time with family or just time like resting and relaxing. 
because that's what we should be doing, right? Yeah, right? something like that. Yeah. Thank you for watching again. And thank you, Little Prince, for sponsoring today's video. We'll see you guys in the next one.